Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to take the uh, simple web page we made in the last tutorial, and we're going to start applying some CSS to this document to, to kind of spruce it up. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to kind of discuss CSS just a little bit. Um, CSS is a way for us to easily apply different styling uh, to various elements on the page. Um, one way to add CSS to a document is um, what's called embedded CSS, which the styles um, are defined at the top of your document inside of the style tag. So now everything inside of this tag will be CSS. Um, we're first going to manipulate uh, the paragraphs on the page. And what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a rule for paragraphs. And this is started with a P to define that uh, we're going to affect paragraphs. And then they uh, left curly bracket and give us, some, uh, give us a couple lines here and a right closing bracket uh, curly bracket um, so everything in between these curly brackets um, will be attributes that will change the way uh, paragraphs on the page are displayed first thing we're going to do is change the font family CSS uh, attributes are formatted with the uh, attribute name followed by a colon and then the uh, value of that attribute. So we're going to make the font Verdana and each um, attribute of CSS is ended with the semicolon so that we can come on down and give another attribute. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the font size just a little bit smaller. And we're going to make it 12 pixels. Uh, when the document loads, every paragraph on the page will now adapt this um, rule and here you can see you don't necessarily want to do this uh, if you're going to be using paragraph tags uh, throughout the site or page uh, for different elements for instance the uh, footer here um, we might want to make that a little bit smaller or do some different things to it um, so what we would actually do is um, assign a class to the footer and what we're going to do is come down here to this div and we'll give it a class attribute and we'll just call it footer um, classes can be defined as whatever they want you can choose whatever name you want um, it's up to you um, and how we define a class is here um, under this paragraph rule, get rid of this extra space, um, we're going to do dot footer and what this uh, tells the page is that, uh, or the browser, is that we're going to define um, a rule for anything with the um, footer class or within the footer div. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make the uh, font italic, which is done with the font style attribute. And you can now see that our uh, font is italic. Furthermore, let's let's make another class here for the uh, navigation. And we'll just call this uh, nav. So we're going to create a rule for the nav. Okay, 
So let's say we want our nav to be in the center. So we'll say text align is center. So now you'll see our, our navigation is centered. I'm going to go ahead and add another bar here to make sense. There we go. And let's say maybe we want um, the background of our navigation to be a different color. And we're just going to make it a very light gray. Yeah, somewhat light. And let's go ahead and save this. And we'll look at it in our browser. Now you can see some of the changes starting to take place here. Um, now, this, I'm viewing this on a, a 40 inch monitor uh, at 1920 by 1080. So, the content's pretty stretched out here. This is a better representation here of what it might look on a smaller monitor. Um, let's do some more styling. Let's say we want to put a border around our content area. So let's give um, this div here for the content area a class name of content. And we're going to make another rule for the content area. And we're going to give it the border attribute. Um, now this this uh, attribute is a little different. There's a a couple of different variables uh, or uh, values that is that go into this. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define how um, thick the border is going to be, and we'll just say one pixel and then space. And we're going to give our next attribute, which is going to be the type of line um, or the style of border. In this case, we're going to do solid. And the last uh, value we're going to give is the color of the line, which will make it black. Um, and if we come over here, you can kind of see it. It's hard to tell with the uh, it's hard to tell with the uh, little dotted bounding box that uh, Dreamweaver puts on here. So let's look at it in the browser. There you have it. Now we have this um, black border around our content area. Um, everything in here is kind of close to the edge, and it's makes it a little tough to to read. So let's bump it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some padding to the um, the content area. And what this is going to do is We're going to put a 20 pixel padding or, or kind of a buffer in between the um, the uh, div and the items inside the div. So there's going to be 20 pixels down the side, 20 pixels here, 20 pixels here, and 20 pixels above. Um, now you might notice that uh, the space in between um, the bottom and, and this last paragraph here is a little bit bigger. That's because, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, the paragraph um, has a, a default um, kind of buffer around it. So this is um, the 20 pixels plus that buffer. But you can see now it's a little easier to digest. Um, another attribute that is not to be confused with padding would be margin. And if we added 20 pixel margin, it's going to be applied outside of the box. Um, for more information on this, uh, look up uh, the box model. Um, just Google search it, and it'll kind of give you an idea of, of the difference between margin and padding. But what you're going to notice when we come over here to the preview is that we have now have a 20 pixel buffer 
outside of the uh, the content area. Um, the next thing we're going to do, let's add a class or a, uh, let's add something to the footer rule here. Let's put a border uh, that just runs along the top of the footer. Um, so we're going to do border top and again we're going to use the the three values. Um, so one pixel. This time let's make it a dotted line and we'll just make it black as well. So let's go ahead and save this. And there, now you can see a uh, border between our footer and the content area. Um, this space here, again, is because we are using a paragraph um, inside the footer. If we wanted to get rid of that space, we could get rid of the uh, paragraph tag. And it's going to just put unformatted text in there. Um, now, you'll see what just happened here is our font changed. And that's because we took away the paragraph. So it's not, uh, it does not have this banana applied to it anymore. So let's put that paragraph back. Um, something I want to show you, um, uh, as I touched on briefly in the beginning, was um, when defining an actual rule for a, a tag, um, you need to use uh, some tact with that. Um, you don't normally want to make too many um, style uh, rules for uh, something like a paragraph that can be used several places on the page. So what we can do is we can kind of uh, pinpoint um, certain areas um, and that's done by, let's first get rid of this. You'll see everything go back to normal here with the paragraphs. We're going to say we only want the paragraphs inside of the content area to have the uh, different font. So we're going to make another rule for the content area and pinpoint it to only the paragraphs inside of a content, the uh, content div. And excuse me, now we can do our font property. So a font family for Dana. And what's going to happen now is you're going to see only these paragraphs inside this content div here will be affected. This uh, paragraph will not. And let's go ahead and put the size back down to 12 pixels. This uh, same technique can be done here with the navigation. If we want to just um, pinpoint the uh, links, we can change, say, the color of the font and get rid of that default uh, blue. And say we'll make it green. Now, Something to note is that, uh, again, we are only affecting the links inside of the navigation div. If we make a link, say, down here for the digital craft, the uh, rule we have made here where the color is going to be green will not apply. It's going to keep that default blue. And there you have it. That's some very, very simple um, CSS. Uh, we'll get into some more advanced CSS later. Um, we'll make a web page that uh, looks a little less generic and, and a little more, um, more of a current style.